So we're going to talk today about the power of pain. How many of you guys read the book? Uh, how many of you guys know Damon John? Anybody know Damon John? Shark Tank? No. FUBU? You guys don't know who that is? Oh, he wrote FUBU? Yeah, he owned, he wrote, he owned FUBU. Damon John. The black bull guy. Oh, right? Man. That's Damon John. Okay, he wrote a book. Like what? Like, uh, FUBU? A lot of young folks don't know what FUBU is because that was like a 90s, 90s and early 2000s. So if you're like yeah. under, if you're under 30, you probably don't even know what it is. But FUBU was like, it was like, yeah, it was, you remember that shit, right? It was an amazing, it was an amazing product line. It was, listen, you used to wear Nikes and FUBUs. You got FUBUs, you cool, you know, kind of, kind of. For us, by us, yeah. But they used to sell shirts, and they started from the streets in Jamaica, whatever. He started selling, and long story short, I don't know how much, how much he's worth, but he's worth millions and millions of dollars, right? He wrote a book called The Power of Broke, okay? Some of you guys are in a position where you are broke. You're not broken, but you are broke, okay? You don't have to raise your hand. Some of you guys are making some good money now. That's fine, but you may be broke in other areas of your life. Emotionally, you're broken or broke. Spiritually, right? Mentally, could be many, many, many things, right? But you're going through some kind of pain in your life. How many guys are going through, how many guys are going through some kind of pain in your life? Don't, you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to. Okay, pain is good. How many of you guys are going through some pain, right? Whether it's baby mama drama or baby daddy drama or issues with your family. Maybe there's some health issues, right? Health issues. You just found out some crazy shit. You got a pimple in your ass. Now it's a fucking war. It's a disease. I don't fucking know, right? Something's going on in your life, whether it's you or somebody else. Anybody have anybody, any family members that are going through some kind of health issue right now? Anybody? Okay. Whether it's cancer, whether it's, could be anything, right? Could be anything. Maybe they're in the ICU many times, right? Uh, maybe you have a family member that's going through dementia or Alzheimer's. Anybody have, have experienced that before? Okay, that's, that's a scary place to be. Like my grandma doesn't even remember who I am, right? Pretty sad because she was my closest grandparent and she has no idea who I am sometimes. 90 plus percent of the time, she doesn't know, right? So it's pretty sad, but that's part, you know, health issues, right? But a lot of people, they look at all these things. They could be anything, guys. Anything that makes you, maybe you just went through a breakup. Maybe you just went through a divorce, right? Maybe the court said you can't see your child anymore, right? Could be anything. Maybe you had a recent death in the family. Anybody had a recent death in the family in the past 12 months? Re recent death, okay? Right, could be an uncle, could be an aunt, could be a cousin, could be a girlfriend, could be a boyfriend. Something has happened. And this is all creates emotional pain. Can we agree or disagree? Okay. Now, what most people do when they feel a little bit of pain, what happens? They cry, they mope, they whine, they bitch, they moan. Now, there's a time and place to grief. If somebody passed away in your family, if your uncle died, I'm not expecting you to sit there and be a rock. It's okay to cry. It's okay to go through that grieving process. There's a process you have to go through. But some people go through it what? They extend that shit for too long. Six years pass by, they're still crying about their uncle passing away, right? I'm not saying you can't cry here and there. Like, yesterday, I was looking at pictures of me and my grandfather, and I sent it to my mom, and I was looking at pictures, I was looking at videos, I was doing push-ups. The... He's 70 years old going to the gym with me, right? He was awesome. We used to do pull-ups together. He was fucking strong as shit. We used to go to the beach together, used to hang out in Israel, and I was watching those videos. It was kind of like memories, right? I still have some of his voice notes, and I was listening to it, and, you know, it's painful. He passed away a couple years ago, but I'm not, I'm not reliving that pain every single day. Right? I'm not going through a depressive moment in my life. Couple of minutes, got a little sad, no big deal. It's normal, right or wrong, guys? Normal. But what most people do, they allow their pain. See, pain is going to do two things. You have a choice every single day, okay? You have a choice. Every single day, you guys have a choice. Every single one of you guys have a choice. You always have a choice whether to do something or not do something. You have a choice to be on time or be late. You have a choice to make money or not make money. You have a choice to be happy. You have a choice to be sad. Everything is a choice. Do you guys agree or disagree? Everything is a choice. Everything you do is a decision that you make, right? And when you make that decision, there's what? There's a cause and there's an effect. True or not true? I don't care if you like this or not. This is the truth. Anytime there's a cause, there's always going to be an effect. There's always a choice that you have to make. Even if you don't make a choice, that's still what? That's still a choice. Some of you guys think that because you're not going to make a decision, that's going to be okay, and you've got to freeze. But by freezing, that's still what? 
That's still a choice. So for example, somebody passes away in your family. You choose to not do anything for a fucking month, two months, three months. You think about just putting your head into the fucking ground like an ostrich, that's what? You're kind of safe. But in reality, life moves on. Time is moving forward. So you already made a choice. But that choice may not have been the best choice that you made. So what I learned from a lot of my mentors is that you have to make choices and you have to make the right choice. You, you don't make the right choices. What you do is you make the choice, right? You make the decision and then you make that decision right. Does that make sense or not? A lot of people are trying to make the right choices all the time. The, the, the problem is you don't know what's the right choice. How do you know what's the right choice sometimes? You have no idea, right? But what I learned from one of my mentors is like, you just make a decision, play the odds in your favor, make a decision, and then make that decision the right decision. So for example, how many guys have broken up with a girl before? Or they broke up with you? Okay, was it a bad decision or good decision? Looking back at it. Could be bad, it could be good, it doesn't matter. It was a bad decision, okay? But what you should have done, right? It was a, maybe it wasn't the right choice at that time. But what I learned is that even though it's a bad decision, you make that decision the right decision. Does that make sense? Yeah. Losing money in the stock market, is that a bad decision or a good decision? It's a bad decision, right? Because you lose money. But you make that decision the right decision. How do you make that the right decision? Yeah, it sounds amazing to say think positive. But what does that mean? What can you get from that, right? There's always some kind of positive, greater fucking good out of every single decision you make. Make that decision the right decision. It may not have been a good decision, but the, pro the, the, the good thing is that what? You made a decision. Now make the decision right. Does that make sense? How many of you guys spend uh, $1,000 or more on a fucking night out? My boy. Play it. 5000 10000 Around ten thousand dollars a night. Was that a good decision or a bad decision? Oh, it was great at that time. At that time, you made the right decision. You made it right. How? You just made a decision, and then you learn from that decision. Does that mean you're gonna make that decision again? <laughs> <laughs> this guy wants <laughs> right. Is that a smarter decision in your book? I don't think so, right? Because you can do a lot more with ten thousand dollars than spending it on a night out, right? On a night out. On a night out. Yes, sir. No, 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 on a night out, going out on a fucking boat or a party or a club or whatever the fuck it is, you're in fucking Miami. You can lose your whole fucking house if you go to Miami, right? Or stay here, fucking, when I say go to Miami, I'll go to the fucking clubs here, right? Like, sometimes friends call, hey, you want to go out? Like, nope. Absolutely fucking literally not. Well, why, why, okay, why don't I make that choice? Why don't I make that choice? Once in a blue, maybe, but why don't I make that choice? Why is it a trap? Yeah, it sucks you in. First of all, what am I going to get out of that night? Nothing. Absolutely. Am I going to find my wife there? No. no. So if I'm not going to find my wife, if I'm not going to fucking make any money from that decision, if I'm not going to build any positive relationships, why the fuck am I going? You might find a baby. <laughs> yeah, I might find a baby that I don't want. Yeah. Right? So you understand what I'm saying? So you have to learn that every single decision you make, there's a right decision and there's a decision. But you still got to make that decision what? Right. right. So most people, they go through pain. There's a reason why I'm going through this, because you got to learn how to use the power of pain. Just because things don't go your way, just because you have a little bit of pain, you have a little bit of disappointment, you have a little bit of struggle, what do most people do when they're in pain? Do they make great decisions or bad decisions? Bad. Horrible fucking decisions. Horrible decisions. Give me some examples of some decisions people make when they're in pain. Spending $10,000 because you were in pain that day, I know. She dumped you. Fuck you. I'm going to spend 10 G's, bitch. <laughs> I should have been there. I would have been making money that night. I would have bought a bottle for 1000 and sold it to him for $9,000. Hey, spend more money, bro. I wouldn't want... My bottle's better. Right? So what are, most, what are some bad decisions people make outside of his $10,000 decision? Drugs is a big one, right? What do they do? What do, they, what do people do when they... Well, this is a powerful one. Why do people do drugs when they're in pain? To numb the pain, right? Okay, I'm going to show you guys something powerful. What about alcohol? Right? Now, you might say weed is not drugs. I'll put weed in here for you guys. Okay? Weed. So some of you guys think it's not a drug. How many of you guys said that before? It's not a drug. Raise your hand if you think that weed is not a drug. 
Okay, two people say that. Okay, great. Yeah. Right? Caffeine. <laughs> Caffeine is a fucking drug. You know what else is a drug? You may not realize it. Sugar. Sugar. How many times people are depressed and they start eating chunky monkey ice cream? Okay, Gino loves that shit. Every night. It's amazing. It's amazing. My butt. Right? Sugar. What happens when you eat sugar? Oh, well, forget about the fat part. What happens first? You go up, and then you go what? Crashing fucking down, okay? So there's a bunch of shit people do. And, uh, huh? You're doing what? You become dependent on the sugar. You get cravings for it, right? But what I'm... I'm sorry? It depends. There's, there's positive ways to scroll social media. I just unfollowed like 15 pages yesterday. No, I, I, if you look at the people that I follow, it's like, like less than 250 people. It's all business pages or people that I actually know, whatever, respect. But outside of that, there was a couple of pages that don't post anything. I'm like, if you don't post anything, I don't need to see your shit. I want to see positive content. On my feed, I see positive shit. On my uh, explore page, you see a bunch of fucking memes. Because <laughs> everyone sends me memes, I send them memes and shit. I'm the meme god over here. Yeah, it's fine. Isolation. Isolation. Yeah. That, that, well, it depends. It depends. It could be bad. It could be good. Right? But well, I'll put isolation here. What else do people do when they're in pain? Self-destruction. Right? Self-destruct, self-destructing activities. Self-destruct. Also your health, you don't eat, you don't... Maybe you don't eat. You don't move. Right? So what I need you guys to understand... There's two decisions you can make. You can make all these bullshit decisions, which all it does, what's the cost? That's the cause, right? There's an effect, an action, but what's the effect after all this? What's the effect? What do you lose? Yeah, but what do you lose? What's the most powerful thing? Time, okay, great. You lose yourself, productivity, what else? Your integrity, what else? You lose the most valuable thing in the world. Listen, we are on this planet to do two things. Okay, outside of re- reproducing all that stuff, you're, you're, you're living life to what? For most part, what is life a, a big what? It's a big experience. lesson, experience, right? So you can talk about experience, you've got a lesson. Just because you have an experience doesn't mean shit, but life is a big lesson. It's all about teaching you something on a daily basis about yourself, about your family, about your decisions. I have never in my entire life, okay, I never did drugs, I don't drink alcohol, I've never been fucking drunk and shit, I don't smoke weed, I never smoke weed, I don't fucking run around eating fucking chocolate monkey ice cream all the time, sugar here and there is fine, no big deal, right? But, but why don't I do these things when I'm in pain? Because I understand that pain is powerful, okay? Some of you guys do not have enough mental calluses. You need mental calluses. You need to go through the pain. Matter of fact, some of you guys are trying to change your life every single day and you're trying to avoid the fucking pain. When in reality, the biggest blessing is that you actually have the chance to go through pain. You guys know there's a disease or disorder, right, where you can actually not feel pain? Did you guys know that? Like, you could just put your hand on the stove and you won't even fucking know that it's fucking getting hot. I don't know what it's called. I went to Orlando and somebody I know in Orlando You don't know how scary that is? You know how scary that is because you do not know that what? You're not, you don't know you're in pain. Pain is the best thing on the planet if you know how to utilize it properly. I'm not saying go out home today, take a screwdriver and start fucking bashing your fucking toes. I'm not saying that, even though that might help some of you guys. Because some of you guys need some physical pain a little bit. What I'm talking about is mental pain. Okay? How many of you guys hate physical pain more than mental pain? How many of you guys actually hate mental pain more than physical pain? Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. Okay, some of you guys have not been through enough pain in your life to make you strong enough to accomplish the goals that you need to accomplish. Some of you guys have these big fucking grandiose ideas that you want to accomplish in your life, but you're not going to accomplish them if you don't have mental calluses. Because a lot of the things you have to go through to get to where you need to get to, you have to understand, you got to go through some pain. I'm not saying you need to fucking pain yourself every single day and be like, a, what were those people called? Where they want to like hurt themselves and shit. Yeah, don't be a masochist, okay? No one's telling you to be in pain and be emo every day, okay? I'm not saying that. Yeah, man. You're just kidding, right? But that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying you need to be going through fucking pain every single day in a way where it's like, oh my God, pain, kill me. No. What I am saying is that there's going to be situations in your life that are going to create some kind of pain in your life, and you have to identify the pain and then identify the decision you're going to make with that pain. 
Some of you guys run after all these things. Why? Because it does one thing for you. What does it do? It numbs the pain. How many guys, you don't have to raise your hand, how many guys smoke weed because it makes you sleep better at night? Right? Some, I, mean, people, I hear people say that. It helps me sleep better at night. Oh, how many guys drink alcohol or drunk alcohol before because you were going through some pain, emotional pain, and that was a way to escape a little bit? I know someone that drinks alcohol because he likes to have that flow of being able to talk to girls in a club and a party because it's flowy because, you know, the, the, the consequence part of your brain gets shut off. So you can just talk to anybody without worrying about the consequence. What does that do to that person? Now he's dependent on fucking alcohol, right? Think about that. He's dependent on alcohol because he cannot go up to a girl when he's fucking conscious. Because you can only go up to a girl when he's what? Drunk. Drunk. How many guys know people like that? They can't, they can't even open their fucking mouth to a fucking female that walks by because they're what? They're afraid because they haven't built that fucking muscle. Whereas a guy like me, I can go up to anybody in the fucking world. I don't care if they're tall, short, fat, skinny, smart, stupid. I can go up to anybody and say, hey, how you doing? I don't worry about the consequence because I've learned how to do that because I didn't go through the pain. Do you think it was easy to talk to people when I first started at 17, 18 years old in the middle of the diamond district? and having to talk to customers and trying to get customers to come into different stores and sell their shit? You think that was easy? No. It was uncomfortable as shit. I used that pain to my advantage because I learned lessons through that pain. But instead of doing this, right, I actually was sober. So when you're sober or when you're not going through all these different things, when you're not going to all these vices, what happens? You're able to embrace the what? You can, you can embrace the pain and actually fucking feel it. Well, it doesn't create clarity yet because you got to be self-aware about it, right? Some people are just going through pain just to go through pain. That's a waste of fucking energy. But when you're going through pain, especially when it's mental pain, there's so much power in that. And a lot of people run away from it. A lot of people find a way to like <sighs> numb the pain. They find a way. For example, isolation. Some people go through isolation thinking that's going to help them. Some people are so afraid of being fucking alone because they're afraid of what? They're afraid of their fucking thoughts. They're afraid of the mental pain of being alone. How many guys are afraid of being alone? By yourself sometimes. A couple of people? How many guys love to be alone? Like you love it. Okay? Those are my introverts. Congratulations. They get a lot of energy from that. Okay? But a lot of extroverts, who's an extrovert here? Is there a mix between both? There is. I would say I'm a mixture of both for the most part. Sometimes to get my brain together, I love being by myself, but then when I'm around other people, like tell them it's something, I just feel good. I would say the best way to identify if you're an extrovert or introvert, figure out where you get your energy from. Do you get most of your energy by being around people, or do you get most of your energy by being by yourself? Right? So if you get your energy by being around people, then you're more, more likely an extrovert. If you get your energy by being around, you know, by yourself, then you're more likely an introvert. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone, it, there's nothing, there's no positive or negative about it. It's just, it's just your personality type and how you actually, you know, you operate. I know for me, for me, I can be alone and I can be with people. I've trained myself because as an extrovert, I get a lot of energy by being around people, right? But I've trained myself to be by myself for hours and days. I go to different countries by myself. Like I'm going next, this week, uh, Saturday, I'm going with my brothers though. But uh, if they didn't want to come, I would go by myself to freaking all these places I'm going to, right? I've been to some of the best places in the world by myself. I was in Morocco, Incredible fucking country by myself, right? Anybody Moroccan here? No? You? Right? What'd you say? What'd you say? About a Moroccan shit? Moroc I don't get it, but okay. So understand this. Listen, being alone, right? Being alone can be a painful thing or a not painful thing. So for some of you guys who love being alone, that's not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the guys that are afraid of being alone, Right? Understand that pain is there to teach you a valuable, valuable lesson. What are some lessons you can get by being in pain? Think about that for yourself, right? If you're going through some kind of pain right now, I'll, I'll talk about money because we, we want to talk about money, right? Let's talk about money quickly, okay? You're fucking broke, okay? You're a brokey. And if you, got a, if you got like 50 grand in your bank account, you're still broke, in my opinion. You got 100 grand in your bank account, it's still broke, in my opinion, okay? Not broke when you, when you have cash flow. It's not about how much money you have, it's about cash flow. There's no such thing as passive income. 
No such thing as passion. Because there's, there's still some fucking energy you got to put into that. I don't care if you own a billion fucking dollars worth of real estate, you still got to what? You got to think about it, be, be, be on top of it, so it's still not passive. Nothing is passive, right? It may be less hours, it may be less active, that's fine, but every single thing you do is fucking active. Until the day you die, nothing is passive, in my opinion. And you guys can, you know, look, look, look it up. There's nothing you, and if it is passive, completely you just put the money and look away, that's not going to happen because you're still what? You're thinking about the fucking money. Like even stock market, it may be as passive as it may come, but you still got to what? You got to check on it. If you put one minute into it, it's still not, it's not passive. It may be less active, yeah, fine. Okay, but you still got to be keeping your mind uh, uh, attached to it, right? So I don't, I don't believe in those, those gimmicks of passive this, passive that. You got to fucking work for your shit. Some are more active, some are less active. It all depends. What you guys are doing is very active. A job is very active. Nothing wrong with that. But you got to start somewhere, right? When you, when you start a business in the beginning, guess what? You're going to be fucking active as shit. Sometimes even triple what anyone else would put in. 100 hours a week, right? Seven days a fucking week. 24 fucking seven. You're sleeping and fucking dreaming about the business. How do I know? Ask me how I fucking know, okay? I know, okay? I've been through that shit, okay? But then eventually you build yourself to the point where you're not thinking about it as much or you're not actively dependent on it because it's not just you. It's a bunch of other people that are accumulative growing, growing a company, right? Because you can't do anything great by yourself. So let's talk about money. So some of you guys are fucking brokies, okay? Is there anything wrong with being a brokey? Yeah. Okay? The biggest opportunity to become successful, in my opinion, is not for someone that already created success. It's so much harder for someone that has a million dollars in his bank account. Let's put person A. He has one million dollars in his bank account. Okay? And then it has Brokey, who literally can't even fucking eat today. Literally, he has seven dollars. He has to make a choice. Am I going to eat or am I going to eat? Okay, let's put it that way. Who do you think has a better chance of succeeding? Why? I'll give you guys an example. The guy that has a million dollars, he's already what? A lot of times, not all, a lot of times he's what? He's comfortable. He's chilling. There's no pain. What pain does he have? He may have pain from family. He may have pain from health issues. But when it, I mean, we're talking about strictly fucking money. What pain does he have when it comes to money? Maybe the fear of losing it is the only uncomfortable feeling he may have. Or the fear of not knowing what to do with it, as an example. Okay? But what about Brokey? What does Brokey have? Nothing. Nothing. So he's already in the fucking, he's already in the shits. He's already in pain. So what he does with that pain is completely what? Up to him. And usually, I can tell you, listen, when I was broke, I had this intense, incredible fucking energy inside of me. Okay? I got it from reading the book called The Power of Broke by Damon John, which I talked about earlier. Incredible fucking book. And he talks about when you are fucking broke, you use that energy to your fucking advantage. Some of you guys, I have so much energy in being broke and you're using it to the wrong shit. You're using it to not, not to your advantage. You're broke. Great. Awesome. You're fucking 22. It's expected of you to be broke. Like, some of you guys are 28 years old. Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. I'm such a loser. No, bro. It's okay. How many people do you think actually make, 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 not have, make $500,000 a year at 30 years old? Less than one fucking percent. Less than one percent of less than one percent of the population from ages of eighteen to fucking sixty-five makes more than fucking five hundred thousand dollars a year. Less than one percent. So you're th sitting there comparing yourself to some fucking Instagram fucking model or some bullshit motherfucker that has some Lamborghini, by the way, which is so easy to fucking get. Okay, Eight, listen. There's this fucking thing in, La in, in Los Angeles where groups of boys come together. Okay, it's a, they rent the car. So it's four of them. They put twenty k each. That's eighty thousand dollars down payment. And they all split a thousand dollar payment, a four thousand dollar payment every single month, thousand bucks each. And they drive around with a Lamborghini Urus. And you think he's better than you. You think that, oh yeah, he got there. Listen, the percentage of people that are actually creating success is fucking tiny as shit. This doesn't, this doesn't mean this should demotivate you. This should fucking motivate the shit out of you. Because all you gotta do is separate yourself from the masses of asses. I promise you. They're, the people that actually sustain themselves for a very long period of time. Listen, every single successful person had to go through something massively painful in their life. Do you guys agree or disagree? Massively. And I learned this from Patrick B. David. 
He talks about the three things that someone needs to become super successful. Number one, you need someone that truly, 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 genuinely from the bottom of the heart gives you unconditional what? Love. For me, that was my mother. Unconditional love, unbelievable. I am the person today with empathy and a heart because of my mother. If it wasn't for my mom, I wouldn't be, I would be fucking ruthless. Zero empathy. I wouldn't give a fuck about anybody. I'd be super selfish. But because of my mom, my mom put, instilled in me love, care, being tender, right? Being, having a, a, a softness to, to me on the inside. Not on the outside. I'm a little rough. I get it. But on the inside. You get to know me, spend some time with me, you realize I'm a soft person, right? Very loving, very caring. But the second thing that you need that Patrick B. Davis said you need to become successful is what? Unconditional amounts of pain from someone. Someone needed to create some kind of fucking pain in your life. For me, guess what that was? My father. <laughs> so my mom gave me massive amounts of love, and my dad gave me massive amounts of what? Of pain. Which equal to discipline. Right? Which benefited me. Right? I, I still love my dad for that. Did I, do I like the way he did it? Probably not. Could he have done it a little bit differently? Of course. But that's okay. That's my story. It's my life. I don't care. It is what it is. But massive amounts of pain. Right? Not only through him, but me going through foster care, me getting kicked out of eight schools, me getting fucking ridiculed and criticized and condemned and put down and beat up and bullied and fights and bullshit. All of that from zero to 19. Massive amounts of fucking pain. With a sprinkle of love from when my, when my mom was there. Right? So what that did was what? It taught me that it's, it's, life is painful and it's okay. So I learned not to run away from pain because I didn't do drugs and shit. I'm fucking 15 years old going to foster care. Did I sit there and, and, and hide under a rock? No, I embraced the fucking pain. I went through the pain. I walked through the fucking valley of fucking fire and I'm like, oh shit, let's go, baby. Let's fucking do this. And that built mental resiliency, mental fucking toughness. The reason why I'm talking to you guys is because the power of pain is so powerful, but you guys are running away from it half the time. Some of you guys are afraid of a fucking breakup. You're afraid. You remember when I broke up my girl? What I, what, what, you were with me almost every fucking week, right? Let's fucking go, baby. Let's, let me feel that shit. I want to feel it. I want to feel, feel amazing. I use that to my advantage, guys. I, sometimes pain is awesome. Huh? Hell yeah. yeah. You need the pain. You need it. You need it. I'm actually going through something extremely emotionally painful. I'm talking to someone that's not fucking physically in, 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 in this vicinity. I'm talking to someone that's fucking 1,000, 2,000 miles away from me. Is that easy? No. It's painful. I'm like, great. Power of fucking pain. Let's go. Let me see. Let's see how long I can do this for. Let's go. Push. Pull. Give me that fucking pain. Give me that mental callus. Because now the next time it happens, I'm fucking Gucci. The next time a painful uh, thing happens, I'm like, oh, there's nothing. Why do you think when MMA, or MMA artists, you see the fucking uh, uh, mixed martial arts, they start hitting their fucking shins with those fucking metal things? You ever seen them hitting their shins? They start fucking doing this to their shins, they destroy their fucking shin bones. Why do they do that? So they can make it stronger. So they can make it fucking strong. You ever seen a monk get kicked in his balls? You think, oh my God, how can he do that? They've been kicked in the balls for fucking years. I'm not saying you need to kick yourself in the balls because you may not have kids, okay? But what I am saying is that how are they able to do that? Because they took the most painful fucking thing on the planet and they fucking repeated it over and over and over again to the point where now their mind is like so in control they don't feel the fucking pain or they feel it but they just they embrace that fucking shit does that make sense some of you guys are being in my opinion instead of being broken you're a pussy in my opinion sorry for my language i'm being i'm being serious and this is not to disrespect any females i'm just explaining to you guys some of you men need to learn how to i think women can tolerate pain more than men sometimes most of the time which is why they give birth Think about that. Women give birth, right? I know they ate the apple. I understand. I get it. God punished them for some reason, okay? Every month they got a drip. I get it. Yeah. No, you think that's kidding? That's why God did that. They got a, bearing a child is not the easiest thing. I saw, I saw a video on TikTok the other day. Some lady and a guy were in a, in, in driving to the hospital. They had to park in the middle of the street, and she got to give birth. Literally right there in the spot. Right on TikTok. Awesome. While they're on the phone with the hospital or the, or the, or the, or the, or the ambulance, or whatever it was, 911. Huh? It was not a lot. <laughs> it wasn't live though. But what he did was he put the fucking phone on the thing, the dash cam, and fucking started recording. Point is this: women can bear pain, right? What I'm, and that's a lot of physical pain and mental pain. Giving birth. You ever seen? A, listen, you want to you want to man up a little bit? Go watch a fucking woman giving birth. Go on YouTube. 
Go on the X-rated version of YouTube. Go watch a woman giving birth. I promise you, you'll man up a little bit. You did it before? Or you do it every day? How that? Uh, you watching men giving birth? He's like, no homo. Huh? You saw a lot because you have a child. What, what did that make you feel? Like, damn, bro. You got to go through Nia. <laughs> you got to go through Nape. <laughs> Insider, for those of you that know. The point is this. The power of going through pain is incredible. You need to utilize that to your advantage. Stop being afraid of going through pain. When you get, what does pain mean to you? It's a what? It, it's a signal. It's a signal. Hey, pay attention. Pay attention to this moment. So some of you guys have a painful fucking day. You didn't hit your numbers that day. So instead of moping and groping and yoping and loping in the fucking room, what should you be doing? Not stroking. And not fucking self-loathing either, right? What you should be doing is learning from that fucking day. What can I do differently tomorrow? From, what can I learn from this experience? It was a challenging day. Remember, it's easier to be a brokey than it is to have a million bucks. Some of you guys think that money solves a lot of things. It does, but it makes you weaker in some areas. Ask me how I fucking know, right? I have a lot of friends. I make a lot of money, and you could tell because I saw them fucking, I saw them on the climb. And on the climb, they're not as hungry. Once they get there, they're not as hungry. Eric, am I, am I, you know me for seven plus years, eight years. Am I hungry when it comes to business and money and ambition? Am I hungry as I was when you first met me or did I get worse? Or did I, did I get less? About the same. Okay. Why is that? When he met me, I wasn't, matter of fact, you know what's crazy? When I met Eric, he was making way more motherfucking money than me. Way motherfucking more money than me. Wait, as a matter of fact, I was fucking learning from him. And this is not a diss on him. It's not nothing to do with that. I've explained to you where I was. I wasn't anywhere where I am today. I was knocking on fucking doors, and I was knocking on doors on live fucking Facebook Live, and that's how we fucking met. He met me through Facebook Live while I was knocking on doors. I was knocking on doors, I went on Facebook Live, and I started knocking. That was how I started. Crazy fuck. And then I messaged him. He just saw, no, because it, it, it was a recorded Facebook Live. I just went on, I was like, who the hell is that? Because yeah. I had a team of like 70 people knocking on the door. Huh? Yeah. Hey, it wasn't phone, bro. We were doing other shit. Try to recruit me, and I recruited his ass. <laughs> I want to say one thing back to that point, though, where you can, um, what he said, you know, sometimes money makes people weak. This is like one of my favorite quotes of all time. There's a story behind it, but I'll give you the quote. It, I'm laughing, it flies farted. Um, Tough times build strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times make weak men. And weak men make tough times. Yep. So it's a cycle, right? It was a story. I'll give, I'll give you the quick backstory. It's a, it was a story of a guy who would ride his butt, would walk to work, okay? His son ended up driving to work. His grandson not only drove to work, but what do you think he drove to work? Ferrari. In? A Ferrari. Okay? And what do you think his son did? Walk. He walked to work again. Because all that easy times made him weak. Which is true, because a lot of times, generational wealth usually dies out after two, three generations. Why is that? Exactly, because they don't understand the power of being broke, the power of being in pain. You th let me tell you something. Who should be spoiled in your family? Absolutely not. Holy shit. Absolutely not. Matter of fact, the kids should never be spoiled. <laughs> the kids should never be spoiled. Never. The only person that should be spoiled is one person. Guess. The wife. That's it. That's the only. So you guys said mom because you guys own wives. Okay, I get it. Fine. Right now it's mom. I get it. But when you're married, it's what? Your wife should be spoiled. Your wife shouldn't earn shit. The fuck is that? No. Your wife gets everything she fucking wants. You take care of your wife, she'll take care of you. Hopefully you have a great marriage, right? But who gets spoiled? Your wife. Who earns everything? The, the fucking kids. Show me kids that get everything they fucking want because they wanted it or they fucking start crying in the fucking store. I'll show you a fucking weak fucking child later on. I'll show you a child that's so dependent on someone or something that he cannot be self-sufficient. Like I said, the greatest thing my mom did for me was what? She showed me massive amounts of love. 
What's the greatest thing my father did to me? Give me massive amounts of pain. Massive amounts of pain. I'm not I'm talking about physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain. Like I said, was it the right way to do it? No, but it fucking worked for me. Will I do that to my kids? No. Will they have pain? Yes, but not the way that you're thinking. They're going to have to go out there and hunt and earn and grow and be stretched a little bit. They're going to earn that baby bottle. They're going to earn everything. <laughs> I make a joke all the time. My kids are going to walk around with a fucking, you know, shovels as kids. They want to they eat. They're going to go fucking go to the backyard and, and do some shit. It's a joke. But they're going to work. They're going to understand that whatever you want, you got to go out there and work. How many guys, honest, uh, raise your hand. Please raise your hand if you were spoiled as a kid. Be honest. Caleb. Be honest. Anybody was spoiled here? Caleb. You were spoiled? My mom says I'm spoiled, but... If your mom says you're spoiled, you're spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Trust me. If you're not spoiled, you're not, your mom wouldn't say that. Earning is spoiled. Okay, earning is spoiled? I can tell. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? You know what's fucking crazy? Your fucking work ethic tells me that. No, no, not you. I'm talking about him. It's not just him. Think about that. Your work ethic shows me that. How you operate in business and in work shows me that. How many guys had to earn shit when you were younger? You had to earn a lot. Earn. Like, everything you had to earn. You got nothing for free. You had to fucking fight for shit. Okay? I like that. Good. Which is what shows up in your fucking work ethic. See what I'm saying? So the parents that think they're doing the fucking a good job to their kids by fucking slapping their back and kissing them and saying, oh, it's okay here to shut them up or giving them a fucking tablet every time they start screaming and yelling, those are the kids I'm, wor I'm worried about because they haven't earned shit. They don't know what it takes to fucking work. They don't, the, the parent is not giving them enough time to go through pain. Pain is good. I'm not saying they need to go through fucking crazy amounts of pain where they're going to go to hospital. No. But good mental pain is good. Nowadays, kids go, oh, I'm depressed. What the fuck are you talking about depressed? Do you know what real depression is, guys? How many of you guys used that word in the past fucking year or two? The word depressed. Be honest. Don't use that fucking word because that's not, that's, you're, not, you're not depressed. You may not have a great day. That's okay. That's normal. You're not depressed, bro. Real depression, you will know what real depression is. Anybody have family members that go through real depression, like real massive pain, massive depression? Okay, so don't say you're depressed. I fucking hate that when a 22-year-old says, I'm depressed. No, motherfucker, you're not depressed. You're just trying to figure your fucking life out. That's normal. You're going through some fucking pain. It's okay. Unless you're thinking about killing yourself, that, then we can talk about depression. But if you're not thinking about suicidal thoughts, you're not depressed, man. You're having a bad fucking week. You, just, you have no direction in life. That's okay. How many of you guys have no idea where you're trying to be in fucking five years? You have no clue. Great. Nothing wrong with that. You may be a little bit depressed sometimes here and there. But you're not depressed. You may be sad a little bit here and there. Use the power of pain, right? So you need massive amounts of love, massive amounts of pain. And the last thing you need is what? You need an enemy worth fighting for or fighting against. Right? You need, a, you need an enemy. What does that mean? For me, who were my enemies growing up? My haters, right? My haters, my doubters, the system, right? When the government took me away from my mom and my dad and put, put me into fucking foster care system, right? I went against the system, the schooling system. To me, all of that were my fucking enemies. And I wanted to prove them fucking wrong. Because they all said that I wasn't going to make it. I wasn't going to do that. I'm going to be a fucking menace to society. I remember this like it was yesterday. I, I went to my friend's house. And they didn't realize the door was open, the outside door. He went inside. And they're like, why are you hanging out with this kid? This kid is all but trouble. He's going to get you killed. You're wasting your time with him. Who are my best friends? Their parents are saying that. They didn't know that I was outside of the fucking door. And I heard them having a conversation. You don't think that motivated me? You know what's crazy? That parent and those parents now wish their fucking child spent time with me. Because that child, not, I'm not going to break up any stories, ended up in a lot of negative situations. Jail, drugs, a lot of problems. Of course. Absolutely. I talked to a lot of my old friends. I talked to them. I don't spend time with them, but I talked to them. I say, what's up? Right? How life quickly fucking changed. The teachers were so worried about hanging out with Michael. Yeah. They made a big mistake because they didn't understand that I had massive amounts of pain inside of me and I used that to my advantage. I used that to fuel myself. Every single day I went out there and I fucking grinded like no tomorrow. For example, a guy like Roberto. Give it up for Roberto last week for being number two. <laughs> You've been here for two weeks. He just came here, started cracking you. Give it up for Julian. Yeah. Give it up to someone like Javon. 
Okay? These are guys. These are, we give it up for someone like Kevin. These are guys that literally last week made two, three thousand bucks. How much you made last week? Thirty-four hundred dollars last week. I'm gonna say that again. He made thirty-four hundred dollars last week as a fucking sales guy. One week, not one month. Give it up for him. So is there money here? Yes, I promise you, he used a lot of pain to fuel his ass. True or not true? You guys got to get comfortable in being in pain. Embrace. Embrace. And you know what's scary? You know what I'm, who do you think I'm worried for the most right now? I'm not worried about you guys. You know what I'm worried about? One, two, three, four, and whoever else was there. Why am I worried about them? I'm afraid, I'm worried, I'm concerned that when, when you get to number one, number two, you start doing, ah, I'm number one. You get fucking lazy. Why do you think it's so hard to win the Super Bowl every fucking year? It's not because they're not so talented. It's not because they keep changing ages all the fucking time. It's because the team thinks they're the fucking shit. And when you think you're the shit, that's when you fucking lose. They don't have that same mindset as when they were losing every fucking season. Right or wrong? You have to go into every fucking battle, every single day, as if you're nothing, as if you're no one, as if you're brokey. The power of being broke, the power of using your pain and reminding yourself. You may not physically be in pain, but guys, I am so fucking motivated right now to make money, it is unfucking believable. Unbelievable. I have my coaching company, I have this, I have my real estate company I'm working on right now, I have solar we're working on right now. Like, I'm fucking hungry, I'm, fu I'm trying to fill up my fucking time. I come here because I want to help you guys because start thinking a little bit differently so you can start making three, four thousand dollars a week consistently, and then five, six thousand dollars a week consistently. Or running an office making ten thousand dollars a week. How many of you guys would like that shit? But I am afraid for those top four people. I am very afraid. I'm very concerned. Because some of you guys are sitting there right now saying, I'm gonna be fucking number one this week, which I'm excited about. Someone is coming after his fucking belt. Where's your belt, by the way? Why are you not holding who's number one this week? Was it you? Where's the belt? Hold the belt. Right? You got to let everyone know what's up. Someone's going to come towards that. Get that belt. Where's the belt? I need my login. You need your login? Okay. You're still waiting for login? You didn't do your training then. We'll make sure you're good. We'll make sure you're good. He's waiting for the login. He want to slap somebody. I know. No, 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 no. Don't be like Eric say two weeks. Don't be like that. Look, I love you guys. Listen, listen to me. I love you guys. Guys, guys, I love you to death. I love you to death. I, I, I want you, I, I'm inspired when I see you guys. I'm excited. Some of you guys, I don't shake your hands. How many of you guys realize I don't shake some of you guys' hands? There's one person in this room, I don't shake your hand. You know why I don't shake your hand? I don't shake, I don't shake, I don't like shaking slippery, slimy, gooey shit. Now, I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about your mentality. I'll pound everyone. I don't like shaking hands, I get sick now. I'm not shaking no one's hand anymore, anymore. Fuck that. Pounds, guys. That's it. I'm done with this shit. I'm not getting sick again. Okay, I don't know where you. I don't know where you guys go. In the hood. You guys fucking bring diseases back here. I don't fucking know. I'm bringing masks. I'm done. Okay, but all I gotta say is this: I love you guys. I'm inspired by you guys. But you guys gotta fucking embrace the fucking pain that you're in. Whatever bullshit you're in, don't fucking tell me. Oh, Michael, you don't understand. I don't give a fuck, and I don't want to understand. And you shouldn't understand either. Use that as fucking fuel, guys. If you're living in a one, how many of you guys live in a one bedroom apartment with other people? Anybody? Okay, I live with my mom and two brothers in a one-bedroom apartment, 750-square-foot apartment. I lived in the living room my entire life. Anybody relate to that or no? Anybody? Great, some of you guys. Okay, living room! I didn't have my own fucking room my entire life. Yeah. Living room. I slept on a fucking couch, on a bed, in a fucking living room. That was my story. That's my fucking life. That, that was, that's how I grew up. That's okay. I don't give a fuck. It's my story. I used it as fuel. I remember coming home at 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, and I had to like turn on the lights and quietly fucking go to the bathroom because if you fucking go like this, your fucking mom wakes up. I, I, I did that shit. Life changes because I took that fucking pain and I said, that's it. Enough is enough. I'm going to go out there and crush it. So you guys have an opportunity. This is not me making this shit up. I didn't, listen, I did not force Julian to go make $3,400 this week. I didn't force. Did I, put a, did I put you in a headlock or did you want to go out there and do it? He forced himself to go out there and do it. It may not have been easy. And it may have been painful. It doesn't matter. He went out there and fucking did it. So you have the same choice. Remember, 
You're going to go through some pain. You could choose to go do all this bullshit, and there's a bunch more bullshit, or you go out there and fucking do it. Do what? It. Oh, Michael, what do I do? It. Right? You it. What is the it? What is the it? Anything. Whatever it takes. As long as it's ethical, moral, and you're helping God's children, go fucking do it. Right or wrong? So, I want you guys to embrace the pain. Hopefully you got something valuable out of this conversation. Hopefully some of you guys are going through pain right now and you're fucking like, yes. Yes. I want to feel it. Hopefully you guys feel that. And use that as your fucking fuel. Because there's a massive amount of energy in there. A lot of energy there. All right? So I love you guys. Oh, we'll do a video. Listen, if you love this kind of content, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys in the next video.